Hello, I'm Donald Trump and this is my latest LEGO train related project. I would like to present a Ravis security system programmed and built for a LEGO train layout using Esbrick Plus and Esbrick Lite products connected to standard LEGO elements. This video features a demo version of my program, which I plan to extend for my full train station with 6 platforms and more track connections. The demo version displays a single loop with a station on it having 2 tracks in total. The software programmed using Esbrick Pro Surface allows to set different movement paths for the trains and checks the occupation of different tracks, segments, denying letting a train into an occupied section. The Surface also gives feedback of the signal aspects, sensor values and logged movement paths. The signals connected to the Esbrick Light hubs show their aspects according to the path set and the occupation of the track segments behind the signals. Since Arlock has dozens of different Hungarian and Hungarian related trains and some Hungarian stations, I prefer to use the logic of Hungarian signaling system, but basically the principles are almost the same for every continental countries in Europe. We indicate speed, maximum slowing down at different speeds and stopping, and we also indicate what aspect is predicted for the next signal. And what's the purpose? While using Esbrick driven trains would allow influencing train movements, our lux goal is still driving the trains manually with our hands according to a set of rules, so the system only controls the aspect of lights. Since we use Esbrick, power functions, power depth and 9V control to drive our trains, a fully automated system without the driving fun is definitely not the goal. So basically I aimed for a system which helps train drivers and lag events not to crash into each other and instead of asking each other may I move to platform 2, the movements on our layout will be controlled by this system. And managing all the movements, setting the lights and points is part of the fun, so it makes the station more playable, more fun and on longer term visitor of events may better participate in the experience of our hobby. And how should it work? The system is controlled on the user interface created in Esbrick Pro and uses VDO 1.0 motion distance sensors to detect passing trains. All events of the software are results of user interaction, setting a movement paths, deleting movement paths, or train detection. To make train operations safe, basically there are two things needed. For first, when the station controller sets a movement pass, it can't conflict with any other previously set movement authorities, this is a user interaction. And for second, a passing train must set the signals defending the following section to red, this is train detection. For manual operation of the station, I'd follow the logic of the security system called D55 used in Hungary. A station track and one or two endpoint sections must be selected and, if there is no conflict, logged as movement authority. After setting is completed, signals will get their aspects according to the movement path set. If the two endpoints are selected, automated operation of the station could be switched to let the trains go around. When a section gets occupied, the signal letting trains enter will be set to an aspect of red, while when the train leaves the section by another sensor, after some safety time and recheck on the sensor, the signal letting trains enter will turn to aspect of yellow again. There are two outcomes of train detection. For first, the train is expected to be there. The signal lets the train pass and the train was detected at the previous sensor too. In this case, signals fall back to red. Other option? When the train is not expected to operate the sensor passing red light, in this case a custom sound will be played to alert the drivers around the table. And how is this demo version working? This small station has two different tracks, so the movement paths are passing through the straight, passing at the siding, stopping departing on the straight track and stopping departing at the siding. The non-automated part is easy, setting up the pass, waiting for the train to complete it, then removing the pass and setting a new one. Movements like this could happen only once after the train pass signals will remain red. Automated run is for trains looping around. In this demo, the loop is divided to four sections by the signals, which means maximum two trains can go around without being the same section, which is not allowed at all. When a single train goes around, it is easy. It will meet only green lights, which indicate even the next signal will be green or yellow. When two locomotives are looping around, it becomes more difficult. If they run, they will pass allow always yellow lights, meaning the next signal is expected to be red, but the next signal always turn yellow from red since the other locomotive is still moving. Of course, this is a demo loop. The length of the number of sections can be easily increased to run longer and more trains around. 
and for future I have more plans, these things could be more complicated, it is really just a matter of Lego tracks and number of sensors we can buy. I already designed the software part for my actual train station and the neighboring sections, including my friend's uh, train stations. All I need to do now is get some more sensors and lights, as brick lights, and connect all to my layout.